Unit 2, Lesson 2, um, Horizontal Vertical Translations, Part 2. Again, I'm just going to change this just because I want to stay consistent. We, we talked about we're just kind of treating H as the number we see. So if we see that number as a positive in the bracket, we're going to say move left, right? I'm talking about in that X, that horizontal left and right movement. We're not changing rules. We're just changing the way we see it. Okay. Same thing if we see a negative in the bracket, we're going to move right. Not just so we stay consistent and don't get confused. I want us to stay on the same page. Okay, we did that in the last note, so you don't have to do that again if you don't want to. Okay, that was just the review section. All right, let's this one's just some examples. So we're just going to do a few examples for this one, and then we're going to get right to uh, lesson three today. So write the replacements for x and or y. Describe how the graph of the second function compares the graph of the first function. Okay, so what happened from this one to that one? It was up three, right? Or plus three. Okay, so that's what was changed. You took your x to the fourth, and you added three to it. That's going to be an up three or a vertical change of three. Okay, you can write it as, if you want to see what the change was, you can write the y minus three as well. Um, I think just writing it in words is fine as well, so whichever works best for you. Okay. So then we look at these ones here. So what's the change on this one? So it's a little bit different. But the thing that's important to recognize with this one is when you first look at this, you might think, well, wait, 6 times x is 6. 6 times negative 1 is negative 6. That's not the point. The point is this was replaced, right? The x was replaced by x minus 1. So then what does that do for our movement? moves one right, okay? So don't worry about distributed there. We're looking at what's the movement. The minus three stayed. So this is just horizontal right one, okay? Horizontal right one. Okay. Then C, we have a combination, okay? We have the absolute value of x, and then it's x minus 6 plus 2. Okay, so what's the minus 6 do, Andy? What's the minus 6 do? 6 right. Okay, and Ollie, what's the plus 2 do? 2 up. Okay, and then what shape's an absolute value? The V, right? So this guy right here was right here. And then the shift went to like right about here. So this is where it moved to, okay, just roughly. Okay, good. 1 over root x. So again, this one's a little bit tricky, but it still holds the same rule. What happened? What changed? Yeah, the plus 1, and it went where the x is. So see this x right here? This x was replaced by x plus 1. So to us, that's the trigger for which type of movement? Yeah, horizontal, right? So it's going to be left 1. Okay. Now, 1 over root x is going to have some restrictions. It's going to have some problems, because whenever you put an x in the bottom, you can't divide by 0. So you're going to have the asymptotes. Okay, you get back to those rational function type ideas. Okay. But just in general, that function is going to move left one, regardless of the asymptotes and all that stuff. The whole thing will still shift. Okay? Any questions? You guys are tired too today, so ask questions to stay awake. It's a good strategy. Okay? Here we go. Write the replacements for x and y, and hence the equation of the image. So go ahead and try this with your partner. It tells you what you're going to do to it, and then rewrite the equation. Okay? Same thing with all these. So try that real quick. I'll pause the video. <laughs> all right. So what do we get for A, guys? Uh, y is in third. Put in the bracket. X minus 2. Third is x plus 4. OK. Good. So we have, after horizontal translation of three units to the right, we're going to put in the x minus 3 subs in for the x. That's the important part. And you see that's the right shift. Good. All right. B. What do you guys got? Plus 
two, good. So the vertical translation just happens at the end. What does 10 of the x look like? You guys know what that looks like? Yep. Exponential, right? It's growing exponentially, so it's going really high, really fast. Okay, good. And then C, what do you guys got there, Keegan? Perfect. Okay, what's wrong? Oh, okay. No, it's good. Oh, it was supposed to be zero. <laughs> My bad. My bad. It's all right. Good job, Keegan. Double down. Sorry. Told you I was tired. Okay, so yeah, but that is right. That's the good news. Did you guys get that? Oh, good, good. Okay, so <laughs> square root x plus 4 with the minus 3 outside. So that moves that uh, radical left 4, and then you're going to be down 3. So this is actually going to be more in the negative, right? and it's going to grow out of it to the positive in terms of the picture, okay? All right, let's look at a couple of graphs here. This is the last page of these notes. It's only two pages a day, so. The function represented by the thick line, so this one here, right here, this guy's the thick line, obviously, um, is a transformation of function represented by the thin line. So we're going from thin to thick. How did that happen? Okay, so you, what I kind of suggest is I kind of look at the spot here, and where did that move? So this moved two right, four down. Okay, two right, four down. So that means to me, I need to write for two right, x minus two, four down, minus four. And this is what I was talking about, guys. The x on the bottom, so that, see, that's where the asymptotes come in. Because now we're dividing by 0. That's why this guy is split. It can't be 0, so it's not touching it. So the thin one's the normal 1 over x line. That's the reciprocal function. And it's been shifted. Um, I like to look at, like here, OK? The reason it's a good point to look at is because um, negative 1 over 1 is negative 1, OK? And so the reciprocal is flip. So like you do reciprocal functions, we're getting off track a little here, but if I go, um, sorry, 1 over negative 1, what's the reciprocal of that? <coughs> it's just negative 1, so it's the same spot, OK? But the point is, is that that's a nice smooth point, so I can see the movement. So the movement from here to here is up to right 1, right? We're going up to right 1. So that means that we want to go ahead and go. If we went right 1, we have to replace the x with x what? Good. And then on the outside, we want to go plus 2, right? Right. The plus 2 has to be on its own, because what it does essentially is, after you plug in for x, it's you're going to add 2 at the end, which is going to move your answer up 2. So you do want it separate. OK, good. OK, try C and D with a partner. Pause the video again. All right, so uh, C, what do we see? What do you guys think? <coughs> now, that's really good. That I like that you said f of x, because that's all they told you. You don't know what this function is. They just say f of x, so then you just say, OK, it's f of x minus 4 is all. That's all you need to worry about. Okay, f of x stands for that function. It's the general way of writing the function, right? So don't worry about that. Good. How about D? What did you think for D? OK. Looks like, is it plus? I think it's 4. Yeah, plus 4 shifted left. Did you say left 3 up 4? Left 3 up 4. So y equals um, f of x. It's still f of x. So what do we put? For this one, we are because that's what we're given. I know that's just part that you know that looks like a negative x squared. You're right, but since they just gave us f of x, we're gonna just gonna keep that. So all you have to do though, it's really not any different. We still replace the x with we moved left three, right? So we still put plus three here, and then we went up four. So that's all you have to do. Okay, it's not really gonna make anything harder for you. And a lot of you guys from unit one need to refresh that because we missed that stuff. Okay, you need to get that function notation down. Okay, last example. Okay, for this one, and we'll move on. 
y equals root x is a radical function. What vertical translation we applied, this is a really good diploma type question, okay? What vertical translation would be applied to y equals root x so the translation images passes through 16.7? So somebody just give me some ideas right now. Let's just do an open forum here. How would you go about trying to do this? Okay, I'll go Aiden first. I haven't heard from him yet. And then you, Travis, if he doesn't say what I want. <laughs> go ahead, Aiden. What would you try? Okay. Okay. That, that, that's, that's a good visual to kind of give a, almost, I don't want to say a guess and check, but give you an idea of what you need to get. But as we've done these, what doesn't change? What I mean by that, your input is important because that has to be the input. Do you understand what I'm saying? The 16 has to be 16. Because that's what I'm inputting, right? So they're saying you're inputting 16, you're outputting a 7. So what I want to look at is if I input a 16, what does that output? Not now. <laughs> Not now. That's the point. It outputs a 4. So what do I need? Plus 3. See that? Now we're golden. Yeah, what just happened? Magic. No. 16 is what we have for an X, right? When that 16 is plugged in, we need to get a 7. So if I plug 16 into here, square root of 16 is 4. That's not 7, so we need to add 3 to the 4 to get our 7. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, go ahead and try the second one then. Try the second one. Well, horizontal translation is applied to root x, so the translation image passes through 17.8. I'll give you a second to think about it here and pause it. All right, I'm going to repeat what I just said since I wasn't recording. So what vertical translation we applied to the one we did gave us plus 3. That's the single vertical translation we applied. Now they want to know what horizontal translation needs to be applied. So what it's doing is it's making you figure out what you're going to apply to end the radical to get the 8 output. So what you ask yourself is, we need this to be 8, and we need 17, and we need something to happen in here to get that to be an 8. So what you actually have to ask yourself, you can almost put an x here, can't you? And you could solve, but you also just ask yourself, what's a, what square root is 8? 64. We need a 64 in here somehow. Um, yes, we would add, but... Um, I think it's actually, yeah, so it's going to be, we need to get a plus 47, because plus 47 is going to be a negative 64, right? But the problem is, is that we need it to be a plus, and so we want to do what? Because we know, it's all, we want to think about it as x minus h, right? And so we want to go a minus a minus 47. Because we, we, this means right 47, we need to go left 47. Okay, so let me see if I said that right. So let's let's think let's think here for a second. So if we have a translation image passed through 17 8. Okay, so we have 8 equals. So that's our translation. Okay, so this is how it's normally set up, right? That's just a normal like if we have. Think about your parabolas. It's normally set up like that, right? We do need a plus 47, so what's our h have to be? Negative 47, that's why. Because remember, the movements are set up in that way normally. Okay, so we do want a negative 47, so that means that we're going to have it look like this. Um, y equals, yeah, so for us it still will look like x plus 47, so that's, it'll be left 47. Yep, so you guys are saying it right. We're good. So 47 units left. Okay. All right, very good. We'll pause there. And 